Welcome back to another Overrated Underrated with Creative Fabian. I still have lots of travel videos with Fabian. I, I gotta edit them. So what do we got on the plate today, Fabian? Wow. Well, mm, I was a bit fed up with uh, French wines. So I said, let's go to his home turf and let's dive maybe into Napa Cabs. What do you say about it? <laughs> Uh, before we get started, I'll just see a lot of hate comment below because remember the first overrated, underrated we did? I said Napa Cab overrated because of price, even though there are some lovely wines. So, okay. How about Napa Cabs? What do you think about them? Napa Cabernet. I'm going to say overrated. They're just not my type of wines. I'm nervous, but there are some great wines in Napa. But okay, let, let, let's get started. Why did you say again they were overrated? Because of price, because they're really expensive. Okay, well, I cannot say because they're impossible mostly to find here. So so let's go. Probably the most famous. How about Chateau Montelena? Chateau Montelena, actually. You know, it's the wine that the, the Chardonnay won the Judgment of Paris in 1973. Uh, beat out some white burgundies. They also make beautiful cab. I am actually going to say... They're a, they have an estate reserve, Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's it's expensive, but not ridiculous, not cult price. I think that's, I'm going to say underrated, because that wine ages very, very well. Just classic Cabernet, a little bit bigger, but not over the top. So let's say underrated. Nice. Then let's go to one that I know a bit, because I know one guy who worked there, uh, now he's working here in Bordeaux, Opus One. Opus One. <laughs> I, th you know, I just opened an 09, my last 09 Opus 1 ahead in the cellar. I'm going to say Opus 1 is a wine that's been so overrated in the past that now it's actually, when in terms of wine quality, it's underrated. Most producers in Napa are pretty tiny, but Opus 1 is like Bordeaux, uh, Bordeaux in terms of quantity. They make a lot of it. Good blend. I think the wine is really well. My only complaint is the price, but... You know, when I have Opus One and I have it with age, I'm always, always, always happy. So I'm going to say underrated. Next one, Robert Mondavi. Robert Mondavi. <laughs> a lot of people poo-poo on him because he was bought by a big company. But, you know, he's the godfather of Napa Valley. I'm going to say if you're talking about his private reserve or his Woodbridge brands, those really cheap wines that are all exported around the world, I'm going to say completely overrated because those wines are terrible do not buy them but the, the robert mondavi line the premium wine the cabernet sauvignon reserve and the toe Calon cabernet actually are really really nice especially with age so in the like you know his premium line i'm gonna say underrated now let's go let's see a screaming eagle the one that i used to find i think in uh, in a lot of duty-free shots Screaming Eagle, the classic cult Cabernet Sauvignon, like one of the most coveted. I'm going to have to say, I've had almost all the cult Cabernets from Napa. I still haven't had Screaming Eagle, so I'm going to say no dice. <laughs> have you Have you had Have you had it? No. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, they're already very hard to find here, so yeah. mostly impossible. Uh, let's, let's see for this one. Behringer? Behringer, very well-known wine, another well-known brand outside the U.S. I think some of their more, more inexpensive wines are not that good. I'm going to say completely overrated. Mm. However, it's a beautiful estate, and some of their like more expensive wine, like their private reserve Cabernet Sauvignons, they taste beautiful with age. So I'm going to say, you know, in their premium line, underrated. A lot of people poo-poo on them because it's a big name, so the, the premium stuff like Mandavi, underrated. No. Maya Kaimis. Maya Kaimis, another one of those wines that were in the Judgment of Paris. 150,000% underrated. Those wines are still affordable in terms of the realm of Napa Cabernet Sauvignon. Mountain fruit up in the mountains, just classic Napa Cab. They age unbelievably well. And look, well as my voice cracks. And you can get some of the vintage bottlings cheaper than the current release. Maya Kaimis, underrated. Now let's dive to Harlan Estate. Harlan Estate, another one of those classic cult Cabernet Sauvignons. Those wines are like a thousand dollars a bottle. I'm gonna have to say, okay, price. It's kind of be, but it's just a bit much for everybody. But in terms of the wine, it's one of the best red wines I've ever had in my life. So if we're just talking about 
wine quality. For this one, I mean, it's so expensive. Can we, I'm gonna say properly rated. <laughs> properly rated. That's a great wine. Nice. Now I'm gonna say another one, but excuse me for my pronunciation. I don't think it's historically pure uh, English or American English. Uh, Gergich Estate. Gergich Estate. Mike Gergich is the guy that crafted the famous Chateau Montalena that that won the Judgment of Paris in 1973. Has his own estate. Now, while the wines can be lovely, I'm going to have to say, it's his name, he's still alive, well, you know, he's Croatian, I, I am, I'm close to Croatia, obviously, but I'm going to have to say the wine's a little bit overrated. Mm. I think they're good, I've never really been blown away by his line of wines, sorry. Mm. Now, a picky one, Camus. Camus! <laughs> That's the wine that everybody kind of likes. That's the wine you get the steakhouses, expense accounts. That wine is completely, completely overrated. It's a wine that you will absolutely hate. It's all fruit. It's big. You get a lot of wines of that style, similar quality, for much, much, much less. I I'm going to have to say that wine is really overrated. And now two more, and then we're good for today. Uh, Silver Oak. So, <laughs> another one of those wines <laughs> that is kind of, you know, been overdone in the past. They had their heydays in like the 80s, 90s. I'm going to have to say unpopular opinion. They make, they, make, they make two ranges. They make one in Napa. I've actually had their Napa cabs with some age on them, with 10 years on them. And I have to say they're pretty darn good. So, maybe unpopular opinion, you know. I don't like them when they're young and super oaky, but maybe with age, let's just say overrated. Let's just, look, let's just say underrated, actually. And now I'm gonna pick the last one, Duckhorn. 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 Uh, can, you know, Duckhorn is more famous for Merlot. The Three Palms Merlot actually is one of the greatest Merlots I think I've ever had. The Cabernet Sauvignon is not so bad either. I think a lot of people poo-poo on them. And the, the Cabernet Sauvignon you can get in the $50, $60 range. For a Napa cab, I think that's a pretty good price. So let's say for that, for their Napa cabs, underrated. Thanks a lot. And what, do, you, do you have any one or two that is for us easy to find in yeah, Europe? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to... Uh, so, the two for, for Napa cabs, uh, one thing you didn't mention is a big company, Louis Martini. Their base, Napa Cabernet Sauvignon, used to be like 29 bucks. Uh, maybe it's up in the 30 40 range. I think it offers tremendous value for money if somebody wants to experience Napa Cabernet Sauvignon. It's exported worldwide. Another one owned by the Disney company, Silverado, and Stags, the Stag's Leap uh, AVA. Really classic Napa Cabernet, and I think that wine's also 30, 30 to 40 bucks, which I know is expensive, but in terms of the world of Napa Cab, where you know the baseline price is really a hundred bucks, I think it offers a lot of value for money. Thank you very much. So, do you, do you think Napa Cabs are better than Bordeaux Cabs? <laughs> You know, I actually, I prefer, I don't, I don't, I'm usually, I buy Bordeaux. I usually don't buy Napa Cab because I think in general for, for me, you can, I have respect for Napa. They try to make the best wine possible with what they have, but bo I prefer Bordeaux for most of the time, especially with 20, 30 years on it. Although I have to say, when I drink 70s Napa Cab, it is just a magical experience. And I was with Steven Spurrier right before he passed. He did kind of a Judgment of Paris recreation tasting. And he told me some of those wines he used in the Judgment of Paris, all the Napa cabs were blowing the doors off Bordeaux from his cellar. That's what he told me. I don't know. I guess I can say that. That's, that's kind of off record, I guess, but he's passed. So rest in peace, Mr. Spurrier. <laughs> some of the best I had from the U.S. were from the 80s and 90s. Yeah. The most recent were not very exceptional. Yeah. They yeah. didn't bring as much uh, magic as the oldest oh. ones. Oh. Well, thanks a lot. I hope you guys like this. We haven't done overrated, underrated in a while. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll put Fabian's channel below. And you know what? I'll see you guys soon.